Welcome to the Drawing Center. We're in As If, Alternative Histories from Then to Now, an exhibition of uh, ephemera and drawings focused on speculative fiction. Um, I'll take you through all of the various artworks in the room. Uh, if you're hearing a little bit of background noise, that's the one film we have in the exhibition, which we'll end on. So over here, you can see the wall text, um, just laying out the purpose of the exhibition. For centuries, writers and artists have speculated about narratives that contradict established histories. Their, their alternatives range from the seemingly impossible to the eerily familiar. And then we lay out a couple of the possibilities that you see throughout the literature in this exhibition. Over here, is a series of works related to Sun Ra, the uh, jazz artist, leader of the orchestra, um, Sun Ra's orchestra. So we see here uh, a painting by Aya Aiton, who worked with Sun Ra and was also part of the Chicago 1960s Afro Cobra um, uh, production of the time. Um, we also see a number of prints, original prints, showcasing Sun Ra album covers um, for four different albums. And over here by Leroy Butler, a drawing um, in preparation for one of these covers, that being Sun Ra Discipline 27 -2. In the case below, you'll see a number of the books that are featured in the exhibition. So these are all, or primarily from the collection of Ed Halter, and they're all narratives that focus on alternative histories, um, things that might have happened counter to how they did in our reality. So over here, for instance, we have uh, Black in Time, Lion's Blood, Fire on the Mountain, um, these deal with changes in the past that address the history of uh, slavery and, um, and racism in the United States. Similarly, in Indians 1, the title's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it focuses on a situation in which uh, Native American nations form a country in the United States and uh, become a major global superpower. Um, over here, we have more fantastical examples, um, including Too Many Magicians, where magic takes over science in the trajectory of history, The Blind Spot, which presents portals to alternate dimensions, um, and A Different Flesh, where Homo erectus and um, Homo sapiens uh, cohabitate the Earth. Over here, as you move in, you'll see uh, the drawings of Keith Meyerson. These works were first exhibited at the Drawing Center in 1994 um, as part of a larger series, and we have three of them again here, so that's a kind of exciting um, bit of Drawing Center history that we've included in the exhibition. And these are all from the Pinocchio and the Big Fag series, which is looking at a fictional tale and retelling it as a, uh, as a narrative about queer identity. Over in this case, we have some of the kind of star books of the exhibition. These two uh, very old um, volumes, both from the late 1800s, Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy and News from Nowhere by William Morris. Um, one written in answer to the other and both imagining uh, the future of a socialist utopia in the United States and in England, respectively. Then we have The Man in the High Castle, which obviously is a very recognizable title of alternate, alternative history um, for our viewers to kind of latch on, or our visitors to latch on to the concept with. Um, what might have been the female man, which you may recognize from our press materials, uh, being a uh, a science fiction um, 
a, a fundamental piece of feminist science fiction from the 1970s that imagines four different realities and how they relate to um, gender and identity, uh, specifically in the United States, but in some cases also in a more global sense. Behind me, you can see two works by the Brazilian artist Vivian Kakuri. Uh, these are both imagining a reality where mosquitoes have taken over the world. Uh, so you see that she's done uh, ink drawings on vellum with graphite underneath to create this kind of layered effect. And in this one especially, you can see the swarms of mosquitoes. Uh, thinking about the ways in which mosquitoes already played a pretty significant role in the uh, history of colonization in South and Central America, and um, taking that even further to imagine uh, a reality where mosquitoes have had an even larger impact on uh, the history of the world. Over here we have two, sorry, four works by Pauline Smith, um, who is working with uh, these book covers, specifically books that the science fiction art author Samuel, Samuel R. Delaney um, noted as fundamental to the genre. Um, so she's looking at these pieces of, um, these, these pieces of science fiction and speculative fiction history that relate very directly to the books we have on view. Over here, we have four works by the uh, philosopher, fortune teller, and artist uh, Saint Ohm, also known as Eddie Owens Martin. Uh, and he created a kind of um, alternate reality for himself um, along with a uh, religion called Pasquianism in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, he also created his own art environment based on this, uh, imagining a place where uh, gender expectations were very different from the norm in the 1950s in the United States during the time, pulling in influences from the trad community that he spent time with in New York, and from uh, Central American and African, um, Afri it's Central American and African iconography. Um, so it's it's a very kind of uh, complex combination of elements that he's bringing in to create his own idea of a utopian uh, space or utopian future. In this case, these are some of my personal favorites um, in the show because they're just, we're lucky to be able to see them. These are uh, zines from the 1940s. They were published in Leeds during the Blitz and they're Futurian War Digest. So they were published, uh, it's the only um, science fiction zine to be published during almost the entire run of the Second World War in England. It was a way to maintain community, maintain some sense of normalcy during the time. Um, and if you look particularly at this last one, um, it's a great example of where that alternative history is coming in. We're seeing uh, these English individuals who are currently under siege during the Blitz, imagining themselves as uh, Atlanteans during the fall of Atlantis. So using a historical myth as a kind of allegory for their current situation. Over here, we see the work of Huma Baba, one of the contemporary artists in the show. This is very much about exploring her interest in sci-fi and these creatures who are not entirely human, which is something that we've seen hints of in the books that we saw earlier. Um, and then we move on to a number of other zines in the exhibition. This is Zero, the fanzine of relativistic Dadaism. It was a space for critique and writing uh, during the early 1960s. It won the Hugo Award for best uh, fan publication in 1963. 
Then we have G Squared, which is another science fiction fanzine very much about uh, rewriting and reimagining uh, and thinking about the speculative fiction genre. Uh, Janus, which is uh, the second feminist fanzine to exist in the world and also um, tied to the creation of the first feminist uh, science fiction convention ever created, that being um, WizCon, um, and held in Wisconsin, in case the pun wasn't apparent. Um, and this publication is again focused on imagining um, how science fiction fantasy, speculative fiction, looking at history through these lenses can be used to imagine a better future and can be used to reimagine how we think about the past. So it's very much about applying um, second wave feminists at this time, 1972 this was from, um, applying feminist uh, thought processes of the time, applying feminist scholarship of the time to um, science fiction to popular culture, things of this nature. Below it we have Vietnam, uh, which is a, uh, which is another small self-published zine, this time a former Vietnam soldier reimagining his time uh, in the Vietnam War uh, by placing himself against uh, aliens, so he's fighting aliens instead of people. Um, Kipple, another one of these fanzines, another great example. And above it, excitingly, the cover of uh, the, the original cover art for Avengers 87, um, Look Homeward Avenger, which is the one of the first um, Marvel publications to feature a solo story about T'Challa, the Black Panther, um, and you can see that he's foregrounded in this image. So this is a really exciting uh, drawing for us to have here. Um, it's from the Alvin Kuhn Library, University of Maryland, and they were generous enough to let us display it here. On the wall next to it, we have Joe Bradley, a series of drawings where he's kind of taking these comic and sci-fi elements that we've seen throughout the room and using them, bringing them into contemporary art in the same way that Hume Baba does. Um, so contextualizing some of this work in more contemporary art and contemporary drawing setting. Behind me, another Hume Baba work, this one featuring a kind of ghostly figure on top of a, a, a secret. So again, looking at these kind of apparitions, figures that aren't quite human, things of that nature. Right here, we have the publication Interzone. Um, all of the books, or, or all of the magazines that we have on display here contain elements of the same story, Back in the USSA by Kim Newman and Eugene Byrne. Um, and they each work on telling parts of this story, imagining a United States that had gone through a uh, revolution akin to the Russian Revolution. So back in the USSA is obviously the United Socialist States of America, and this whole narrative is a what if, um, uh, you can see 10 Days That Shook the World here, for instance, this time a reimagining of 10 Days That Shook the World as if it happened in the United States instead of in Russia. And then, over here, we have It Happened Here. Uh, so we have the film ha uh, It Happened Here's trailer, and then we have the book about the making of the film, How It Happened Here, right next to it. This was a film created in the 1960s by Kevin Brownlow, uh, basically imagining um, a reality in which Britain lost um, in World War II, and um, then looking at a Nazi occupation of Germany. Uh, it's a pretty bleak film, 
um, but it's also one of those spaces in the exhibition where we really get to see uh, what would change and what wouldn't change and reflect on how our reality um, and the narratives that we write about um, who won what war and how that impacted society as a whole might not be as clean cut as we actually think. Um, so it's a great um, way to look at the repercussions of um, fascism in a country that kind of has created this narrative of moral uh, superiority um, after the war and look at the idea that people might actually have eventually collaborated, um, again I said it's me, um, might actually have collaborated uh, with a Nazi government and um, might eventually have normalized into that situation. And then looking at this film, we can think about how that reflects on our current political moment. And last, I said that would be the last thing, but really the last thing is the hallway here. Um, we have 12 silkscreen prints uh, featuring the work of Jack Kirby with color work by Mark Englert. And these are all showing us um, production design from the never completed Lord of Light film. Uh, these drawings were actually used during the Iran hostage crisis as uh, fake movie uh, movie production images for the movie that uh, the CIA pretended that they were filming in order to get certain individuals out of the country. Um, basically, that fake movie that the movie, the real movie Argo, centers around. Um, and that's what these images were used for. So they really do relate, um, as much as they relate to a true science fiction narrative and a true science fiction film, they also relate to a, uh, an alternative history that was created in reality in order to deal with a very real political situation.